It's finally here. How's it going everybody? This is Andy with AspenValleyVapes.com and today we're going to be taking a look at the brand new Smock Alien 220 watt dual 18650 box mod. Now I know a lot of you guys have been waiting a long time to see what this mod was all about. It just got pretty hyped throughout the industry. So today we're going to take a look at the new Alien kit. Starting off with the basics of this Alien kit, it can go all the way up to 220 watts. It does have temperature control as well for nickel, titanium, and stainless steel along with TCR, some pretty basic functions that most mods have these days. On this video, I'm not really gonna go over the TFE8 Baby Beast. I already did do a whole video on that and you can see that popping up right here or right here. Don't know which side it is, but that'll pop up here if you do wanna check out my video on the Baby Beast itself. Enough talking there, let's dive in, take a close up on this Smock Alien mod. Take a little close up at the screen, which is a big deal, the firing bar, battery compartment, all that good stuff, some of the operating modes, then we're gonna bring it back up top talk about pros, cons, and all that other good stuff, and of course, have a vape on it. Let's dive down. Here we have the Alien itself. I'm not gonna go through what the packaging comes with this time. It's pretty standard. It does come with the Baby Beast, replacement coil for the Baby Beast, replacement glass, replacement O-rings for the Baby Beast, and then it does come with a user manual for this and a micro USB cord. So nothing very fancy there. If there's something interesting, I'd show you guys. But it's just your standard packaging. They don't leave anything out, but there's no like extra secret bonus in there. So I just figured we'd go straight to it. <clears throat> Let's take a quick look around here. We do have some venting holes up top. Here is your OLED display. Here's your up button, your down button, micro USB port, the red finish on here that we'll talk about a little bit later. I thought it was going to be a like more chrome finish, red chrome, but it looks like it is just a matte finish. I don't know. This is a sample. They could change it, but I'm pretty sure it's good. This is what it's going to be for the final edition. You do have the firing bar right here, which is fantastic. You can see if you press down low, it's going to take a lot more pressure. It's possible. Um, not, uh, not really down here. But as you move up and then boom, and then your, obviously your sweet spot's up top. It gets the easiest resistance, but you can still press it from down here. So if you're gripping your mod like this, you can fire it, boom, boom, boom. You guys know on the HPRIV I didn't really like that, but on this mod, this is a sweet firing bar and it's got great action on it. Over that backside that you guys just saw, you can see that red finish again, and then you've got a little carbon fiber inlay. On the bottom down there, you can see Alien. You can see 220 watt TC. It's a little bit hard to see on that. It's not like the 213, which doesn't have any texture to that so that carbon fiber. This has got a nice smooth, or this has got a nice actual feels like carbon fiber finish to it. I'm not 100% sure if it is, but whatever material it is, it gives you a nice little added texture. We've got some more venting holes up top here. On the bottom, you do have a standard battery door. You just slide it out, slide it out like so. You can see A and B are marked right there plus and minus are marked on those as well. And this is one thing I'm gonna talk about in the pros and cons, but take a note, this is a sample version, so I'm sure it'll be fixed in the final production, but this just does feel a little bit flimsy. I feel like they can make it a bit sturdier. Obviously, it's not gonna be a big problem. I don't really see it breaking off. I'm giving it a lot of force right now. I mean, not extreme force, but I mean, I'm, I'm pushing to the side here. And if it was gonna snap, it should snap. Like, I feel like it would have to take a dirty fall to actually snap this off and it would have to be open. But that's just something to take note of. When you do have it nice and closed though, there is no rattle. So it does stay shut nicely. Up on top, you can see there's the spring load 510 connection and you can fit a 24.5 millimeter on here without any overhang. This is the baby beast on here right now. So I did put the 25 millimeter limitless XL on here and you can see it does sit pretty flush, if not exactly flush right here. This might hang over a teeny bit, but this is a 25 millimeter, so you will be all set with a 24.5 millimeter. But I did just want to show that to you guys for comparison, as you can see here. It does look actually pretty nice on here, that black Limitless XL. I wish this was red. If this red X, if that was a red X in there, that would be pretty sweet looking. But anyway, back to the Alien. All right, so here is the screen, and there's just a plethora of information down here. Up in the top left corner, you've got 55 watts. So that N up there in the right that you see highlighted, that it stands for normal. You can put it in like the normal strong mode, such like that that Smock does have on some previous devices of theirs. Here on the right, you see a tiny little A and B, and that matches up with the A and B on the battery cover that you saw a second ago. So you can see the life of each of your batteries you have in there. Right here, you have the voltage. You have your coil resistance right here. You have the amps right here. You have your mode, I have it in wattage mode. You have the operating temperature, which is a fantastic thing that they included. And then you have your puff counter right here in this bottom. That's how long you fired it last. So if I go like, boom. See, I held it for 1.5 seconds there. I mean, it's just, it's sort of quirky, but I do think it makes the overall design look better. I mean, I'm never gonna actually look at that, 
but for aesthetically on this screen, I think it adds a nice touch there. So if you've ever used a smock device before, you probably know how to navigate the menu system, but to do it, you're gonna to wanna to click three times, boom, three, you're in. And now you can either use, you can navigate the menu with these buttons, the up and down buttons, or you can navigate it with the fire bar just by doing a light click. So you've got your puff counter settings right there. You've got your actual settings where you can increase the dark, the contrast on here, brightness, all that stuff. Let's take a look real quick. So you can do the screen time, screen lock time, the contrast, adjust the resistance of your coil, download and update, and that's about it. But that is nice if you wanna change your screen lock, if you want it to go automatically lock a little bit quicker. I'm gonna turn the screen contrast up, let's see. So I've got the screen contrast at 10 now, I should have done that earlier, I didn't know I had it set all the way down at zero. But, oh, now you guys can see that a lot better. All right, so to not get that menu, just three clicks, mode, mode, you can go to watt mode, temp mode, memory mode. This thing has 20 memory settings in here. So you could, if you have a bunch of different tanks that you like to use and you switch between, you keep a certain flavor in a certain tank and you have a preset setup you like, you've got 20 different memory options to, to mess with on here. That's an awesome device. And it does not forget your settings when you take your batteries out. So that's good. Bring it back out, get back in the menu system. All right, select the mode. We're gonna go into temp mode. So when you go into temp mode, you can set your wattage right away. It's defaults at 30. The coil, stainless steel, titanium, nickel. I'm gonna put it in titanium. Set that there, and then look at that, boom. This is the temperature control screen now. So now on the temp control screen, you have titanium up there. That's obviously gonna change depending on what you what you uh, selected, whether it's nickel, titanium, stainless steel. You're gonna have the batteries down here. You're gonna have pretty much all the same through here, just mode, temp, the wattage, whatever you set at, puff counter and then your actual temp right here, and you can see it's in Fahrenheit. But I just wanted to show that to you guys. Let's bring it back into the wattage mode. Hold that. Strength, put it at normal, and see that how it says normal. If you did to hard, that would switch to an H up there instead of that N. That's pretty much it for the operating the screen. You can do five clicks to lock it. Boom, it is locked. You will not be able to fire it when it is locked. Five clicks to get out of that. If you want to turn it off without going to the actual menu system, you can go with lock it five times and then hold this down. Boom. And then see it brings up the power screen. Boom, power off, hold down, goodbye. So when you see that V1.1.1, that's the current software it's running. So if there is an update released by Smock, you'll know if you have the actual update. This is a sample version, so it might ship when these do come out in the next week or two. It might ship with a updated firmware version, but for right now, that is the current firmware version. All right, one last thing I think you guys probably wanna see before I bring it back up top is that next to the 213. You can see the 213 is just a smidge taller. Here's from the side. Here is from above, here is down below. You can see, I know this is gonna be a hot topic though, this first, this. We're gonna talk a little bit more about that when we bring it back up top. That being said, actually, let, let's bring it back up top right now, go over the pros and cons on the aliens, have a vape on the alien, then we'll talk a little bit about the 213 versus this guy. All right, now that we've wrapped that up, let's get into the pros and cons on the alien mods. Starting off with the cons, Take in mind that this is a sample version sent over by Smock, so it's not the final production unit. Just like on that HPRIV, they did do some updates, because I wasn't the biggest fan of that at first, but they did do some updates on it for the final release version, so keep that in mind. And even with that said, I do only have one con, and that con is gonna be the battery door cover, as you guys saw in the close-up there. It is a little loose and flimsy. Once you do have that door secured, there's no rattle whatsoever. But as you guys saw in that close up, it is a little flimsy and it looks like it has the possibility of maybe breaking off if you're a little too harsh with it. I'm sure Spock will get that wrapped up in the final production version. But as of now, that is my only con. Actually, let me add one more con. In the pictures, not in, in the first release pictures of this that everyone saw and went crazy about, the red did look a little bit shinier rather than this matte color. So that is going to be a con, I guess. I don't know. That's for you guys to decide. As you guys saw in the close-up a little bit better, though, it was a shiny red in the pictures, like a coated shiny finish rather than the matte red finish. I'm not sure if all the other colors are going to be like this matte finish or if the gold is going to be shiny or the gunmetal is going to be shiny, but we do know that the red has got this matte finish. Don't know if that's going to be a con, but I'm going to put it in there because I know in the pictures I thought it was going to be more of a glossy red. All right, on to the pros though, the firing bar. I hated the firing bar on the HPRIV, as you guys know if you saw that video I did on the HPRIV, but on this one, it is fantastic. It's not too restrictive, it's not too sensitive. It is just a good overall pressure sensitive firing bar. If you go too low on it, it's not gonna press. You go to the middle, you can put a little more force into it, 
but if you just grip your hand on it, you're gonna have no problem firing it every single time, which is fantastic. My second pro is gonna be the screen on this mod. They took that Skelly 213 style screen and just blew it out of the water. This screen is way better than Segeli's screen. It is just a clean overall look, very easy to read, and plus it gives you the operating temperature of the device, which I'm gonna go into my next pro, is the fact that it does have that. As you guys saw on the close-up on the screen, it does have the operating temperature of your device, and if it gets too hot, it will not let you fire it. It'll have the device cool down a little bit, 30 seconds is what the manual says. I haven't got it that hot to where it had to cool down, but the manual says it'll do 30 second cool down and then you'll be able to fire your device again. That is a fantastic feature. Huge thumbs up to Smock on that one. Onto my next pro, the button layout on this device. I love how you have the up button right here, the down button right here. There's a little bit of separation between them. There's not gonna be any mix up. It's just a little bit different and it just makes the whole overall design of this mod. One button right here, the firing bar obviously, and then your up and down buttons on these sides. I love that layout, I'm a big fan of it. So that is gonna be in the pros as well. My next pro is gonna be the actual chip inside of here, at least I believe. We're gonna wait for DJ LSB to do one of his videos on to see that full spectrum test, but knowing that Smock's track record, they've been fantastic. They're not making false claims like some other companies, <coughs> Sigeli, or any of those other companies out there making false claims. Smock has been true to the core with the performance of their mods, and that is great to see, especially with what this industry is going through right now. So a preemptive big thumbs up to Smock, but from so far from what I've seen, I've tried it in temperature control, I've tried it in this, I've tried it with nickel and titanium, I have not tried it with stainless steel, but nickel and titanium, I've done dry burn tests and it has been flawless for me. And say down the road, if something does happen, I bet Smock would put out a firmware update, unlike <clears throat> Segeli or one of those other companies out there that's doing all that stuff, making false claims about offering updates down the road. All right, I think that's enough talking for now. Let's go ahead and have a vape on it with the baby beast on here. After we have a vape on it, I'm gonna go into some more final thoughts that I have on this mod, but for now, let's go ahead and have a vape. This is with the baby beast on here, the 0.4 ohm coil in. I've got it at 55 watts, and you're gonna see how it vapes here in a second. See how fast that fires? That is like an instant fire right there on this device. There's no delay, no ramp up time. It is just click that fire button and you're vaping. Obviously the vapor production stuff, that's gonna be come down to what tank you're using on it. I've got the Baby Beast on right here. That's what comes with the kit. If you wanna put the regular TFV on here, obviously you'd get a lot more cloud production or if you're gonna do one of your RDAs, RDTAs, maybe put the Limitless XL on here or something like that. Yeah, your vapor production is gonna be good, but I just wanna show you guys how fast it fires. All right, so now on to my final thoughts. I am a big fan of it overall. I wish it would have been a little glossy. The pictures make it look a little more attractive than it is in person as you guys can see, but all pictures do that. I was just expecting it to be a tad more, I don't know, I don't like flashy, but I don't even know the wording I'm looking for, but I wish it could have been a little more, I guess the word I'm looking for is sleeker. I wish it was a little bit sleeker, like it is sleek, so I don't even know if that's it. I love the back panel, the carbon fiber edition. If I was in the market for a new dual 18650 and it came between the Alien and the 213, that's an easy decision there. Alien wins. From all of my tests, obviously I don't take it as far as like Pete Pissardo or DJ LSB vapes, but from my test, temperature control is working good. I don't vape it in temperature control, but I like to put it through that little stress test just so I can see for you guys and at least give you my opinion on it. I don't do all the advanced testing though that they do, so we're gonna wanna wait and see what they have to say about that. But like I said earlier, knowing Smock's track record, I think we're safe. And if there is something a little wonky, I bet Smock would push out a firmware update. That's pretty much gonna wrap up this video though. If there's anything I missed or anything you guys wanna know about this mod, let me know and I will let you know what my answer is. If I can answer it, if I can't answer it, I'll probably just let you know that I don't know that answer and we're gonna wait for someone else, but I should be able to help you guys out. If you have any other vaping related questions, feel free to leave a comment down below as well. Once again, I wanna thank you guys so much for your support. It's greatly appreciated, especially after that pretty much month long without a video. That is changing as you guys can see now. This is the third one in a row. We're gonna keep them flowing. I've got tons of products to do. I've got some really great ones. But yeah, I think that's gonna wrap this one up. If you guys did enjoy this video, please be sure to leave a thumbs up and subscribe. It is greatly appreciated. And I hope you guys all have a wonderful day and vape on.